with you, made that. Thanks for watching again, and welcome if you're new to my channel. Today I have Josh with me, and he makes wire sculpture out of all kinds of wires, um, wire, and he makes all kind of animals and that kind of thing. So he's going to show you what he's made with wire. So let's welcome Josh. Hey everybody. <laughs> Good evening or morning, whenever this is coming out. <laughs> hey um so yeah you make all the things with wire different yeah. kinds of wire and we're excited to see what you have to show us today yeah i brought a few things i mainly work in smaller sizes because they fit in apartments better <laughs> uh, but i brought a few different things today to show you guys okay cool and you usually do animals right Some yeah sort of generally i I got commissioned once to do a car, which was really unusual, and I didn't like it at all. Um, <laughs> and I, I did the University of Iowa mascot at one point, which was kind of fun. He's like a football playing hawk, so I guess he counts as an animal. Um, but no, generally I do animal uh, art. I just find that that's the most interesting thing by far. I don't, I don't know if you'd want a wire toaster or something like on display on your shelf, but I much rather have an animal yeah i i would too <laughs> yeah so and we put um bug keeper josh that's his instagram uh, name so you can follow him there and see all the things josh also works at the fort worth zoo so he's around a lot of animals and gets a lot of inspiration that way yeah it's really helpful whenever you do art to look at the thing that you want to represent a lot so than to do animals that I'm most familiar with. Or cool. ones where you don't have to be worry about accuracy, like a fantasy creature. That's really nice. Oh, yeah. And um, Josh was on the show um, a while back. He drew a praying mantis. So I will put a link to that at the end of this video. And you can catch that if you haven't watched that already. That was um, the first episode ever. So it's a good place for you to go back and then watch all of them in, in order. If you're going sure. for like the chronological, you made that. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so show us something and then we'll just talk while you're showing us. Sounds good. Well, let's start off with a little palm sized grasshopper. Aww. Yeah. Uh, this is made of uh, plastic coated copper wire, it's phone wire. Uh, it came from a, a phone company that my grandpa had, and he sent a whole bunch of this extra phone wire that he didn't need at all. And so I was able to strip it out of the coating that it was in all bundled up. And then each individual piece is really thin. It's plastic coated, so it feels nice. And it's pretty strong, pretty poseable. So it's it's made a great sculpture material. I don't know what I'm going to do when it runs out. I'll have to <laughs> call the companies and try and schmooze them for more. Can you hold it a little closer to the camera? Let's get a close up on that guy. Yeah, wire is hard to photograph. Um, it really just doesn't come across the same. So if you make wire sculpture or want to get into it, be sure to have a lot of friends that you can show it to in person. Because pictures just, they really don't do it justice. It sounds lame to say that, but they don't. <laughs> um, okay, so... You use that, um, you made that out of phone wire, and do you use any other tools? Yeah, so fingers are great. I mean, you can use your hands for pretty much all sorts of bending and twisting and fastening with wire. But little pliers, like a jeweler's pliers, are super useful. You can uh, pinch it into a much finer shape than with just fingers, and it hurts after a while if you keep doing that. Like. With my fingers, this is about the thinnest that I can force this wire to be. But if I really needed a tight bend, say for a, a spine or an antenna or a tail or whatever it is, then I can use the pliers and squeeze that so that it becomes just like exactly parallel like that. So pliers and hands are really all you need. Uh, and that makes wire sculpture a great travel option for artwork. Uh, I used to do this in in classes in school all the time. Like I'd just bring a few colors uh, in my pocket or backpack and do this while I'm listening uh, if I didn't feel like I needed to take notes. 
doing it on airplanes, uh, in long car rides, for instance, if you're not driving, please don't do that. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's super portable. And then the finished product is also usually going to be fairly compact. True. Yeah, it's great for those, you know, the busy hands. And it's yeah. like, I just got to be doing something with my hands. So. It, it really was born out of me being extremely fidgety and finishing things quickly and needing stuff to do. Uh, <laughs> and I, if I remember to put wire in my backpack, I've always got stuff to do at work, uh, like for lunch and stuff like that, too during breaks. Uh, this is a little Halloween crab. Um, this is multiple colors of the phone wire. You can paint it if you finish something, but it's best if you want it to remain posable to just use different colors of wire, but they all wrap together uh, and you can make something that is just as sturdy as something made of one piece uh, if you tie it together well enough. That's so small. It's so small. It's really convenient if you want to make a bunch of little gifts for Christmas uh, at my workplace. I made a bunch of little animals and brought them in and just let people pick out of the, the 15 or so that were there what they wanted. Um, I've done these for like uh, for sale at botanic gardens and uh, other art galleries and places that just want like a little eight to ten dollar creation. Uh, this still took a couple hours. so. If you're, mm -hmm. if a couple of hours to you is worth ten dollars, you know you can go low, um, <laughs> but people will pay more for it too sometimes. Okay, so tell me how you and your wife uh, were working on one on an airplane. Oh yeah, so my wife and I both work at Fort Worth Zoo. Uh, I take care of invertebrates and reptiles, and she takes care of primates, uh, gorillas, and gibbons and orangutans, um, and. Uh, what we were on a, a flight together coming home for christmas and we brought books but we still uh, figured we should have some other things to occupy ourselves so i brought a bunch of wire and i was going to work on those gifts for my coworkers while i was on the plane and i asked her if she would want to learn how to do it and she didn't grow up being artistic but she's gotten into some more crafty things lately and has really been enjoying that and so she was willing to try and so we started to make a, a gibbon. I was teaching her step by step. Uh, this is the frame that we got started. It basically just look like, looks like a little grabby man right now. Um, <laughs> but you can see where these arms would become eight arms for swinging. And the little head is a circle right now. And she got really quite close. Uh, this is her start. Uh, this <laughs> took about an hour uh, to teach her through this portion. If I was just doing it for myself, it would have taken maybe less than half that time. Uh, but it was a lot of fun to teach. And you can see that she has something really close to what I have here. Uh, and we also noticed a bunch of other people on the plane were looking at us uh, during, and the guy who was in the trio of seats with us kept asking questions about it. <laughs> so, yeah. What are you guys it's, doing there? It's also a way to make friends. <laughs> That's one of the nice things about wire, though, is that no one does it. So if you do it and show it off at all, people are going to go, oh, wow, I've never seen that before. Like, it's, yeah. it's eye catching. It's surprising. Speaking of selling, people will probably pay more than it's worth because it's strange and you're not going to find it very much. Yeah. True. Well, and you've also used uh, jewelry wire. Um, yeah. Like they have that's different colors too. Yeah, right. like uh, this is a great example of just if you want to get into it, uh, this is going to be a fine wire to start out with. Uh, small gauges work generally much better. Like this is 20. Uh, you can go a little higher. Anything above 24 is going to start having a hard time holding its own weight when you make it into a sculpture and it's easier to break. Um, but like 20 is a great standard working weight. You can see that I can bend it really easily, but it like this middle part is going to stay pretty straight unless I exert force on it. Uh, but with pliers, especially, this is going to roll up really easily and you can turn it into whatever you want. It's also pretty cheap. True. 
Okay, so do you make some sort of frame? Like yeah. I was looking at the Gibbons arm and it, it looks like your frame is just wire. Yeah, I'm glad you asked. Um, wire sculpture, it looks really complicated with the finished product, but you, it's made of a few layers. Uh, this is a Tyrannosaurus, and I think that she's a good example of what a finished wire sculpture can look like, where it's wrapped really tightly to give it some body. It's got these like spirals over the back to help fill that in and to add the color, uh, the gradient of brown to orange. Uh, it's got up on the head, you can see some little finer details for like the nostrils and the wrinkles on the back of the neck. And it looks ag ag aggressively complicated, but this is the a, a fine example of a frame that you're gonna build on top of for this. When you're starting off with wire, you can think of it like drawing, but in three dimensions where you're making a little circle, like you would make a circle if you were gonna start drawing a head and then you pull some lines down, like expression lines uh, or action lines to make the body. You can do it a couple little twists uh, whenever you would need to have a joint or whenever you wanna mark off distance for later. And then this frame gets built on by wrapping, like this arm is just wrapped really finely around to start bulking it out. And this T-Rex, has a two dimensional frame inside it that looked a lot like that Gibbon frame where there's an oval around where the top jaw is. There's a bigger oval that would make up the body. There's a triangle for the tail. And then it had uh, some more loops of wire coiled around it that were tightened and that were tied up so that it's double layered for strength. And then over those, that makes sort of a, a skeleton uh, where I can attach the individual spirals to fill it out. I can attach the uh, other wire for the bumps and for the hands and all the limbs can go onto that frame. And so you basically just keep adding layers until it looks done. Uh, and there's no real point where it's certainly done. Um, I mean, this little orca, mm -hmm. for instance, his entire frame was black uh, and then I wrapped him with black. This could have easily gotten wrapped twice as much to make it even thicker. Um, but I wanted to conserve wire. And then it's got the highlights and the belly that were all added on afterward out of white. So it, it starts out as lines like two-dimensional art, and then it gets filled out with gestures like two-dimensional art, and then it finally gets colored in or filled in. Cool. Yeah. Now I do know about another... Um artistic medium that you added to some wire. Tell us yeah. about that. Well, one of the best ways to make this photograph a little better, to give it some more presence, is to put on beads. Uh, and this dragon, who honestly looks pretty solid uh, in, this, in this picture, this is wire that has been layered with strips of, of beads uh, going over that. And so, the main body of this thing, you can kind of see on the head uh, where there are some empty spaces where that's just wire. Um, it was made a lot like that T-Rex, except rather than have tight coils go over it or to have spirals uh, fitted on top, I attached a, a strand of wire, threaded some beads through it, and then tied it again uh, to meet back over here. For instance, on the neck, you can kind of see these are just single lines of wire with beads through them that I tied back in after each length and then zigzagged back across. Um, and sometimes it gets really complicated. You can oh. see some of the sort of musculature on this forewing, how it goes across itself and it goes in different directions. Um, you can see the gestural um, sort of looseness of some of the beads here where it's still fully posable. I mean, this, this arm can come out, these fingers can stretch if they want to do that, uh, but it has a lot more body and it feels almost like a toy uh, or a solid model. Nice. Yeah, oh, right in front of the white, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this currently hangs from my ceiling right now. I had to bring it down for that. <laughs> well, thank you for doing that. Of course, yeah. 
And it's all solid color. I mean, the beads provide a great opportunity to make something really intricate. You can, I mean, imagine if this was not just brown beads uh, and I could have put stripes and I could have put scales and I, I could have put everything on here. Uh, I did this all solid color just for a style choice. Uh, and it also takes so long to plan out the colors. I started a big Spinosaurus dinosaur uh, that was going to be sort of like mossy colored with dark green and light green and turquoise and all these different camouflage patterns on it. And I gave up after 10 hours because it was just going to take forever. Um. So don't fly too close to the sun. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay. How if long you want have to you play been with doing color, What'd you say? How long have you been doing this? Yeah, I've been doing this since middle school. Um, in middle school, my art teacher was an eccentric and really uh, interesting guy. Um, really thankful for him because he it opened me up to a lot of different ways to be uh, that were accepting of my fidgety and, and into odd uh, hobbies sort of personality. But after I was finished with the project early, I still had probably two days uh, of class time that would have been allocated for that project. He gave me a big spool of extremely thick aluminum wire and it was aluminum, so it was still really weak, which allowed my middle schooler hands to bend it around really well. Uh, but he gave me the big spool and he said, make something out of this, uh, that's your next project. And so I made a huge dragonfly that was like three feet long uh, and he loved it and he had me make more and I made a, a cockroach and a mantis and they all uh, got hung up in the hallway for the school art show. And we had those for a while. They lived out in the garden as like art pieces in the yard until eventually they wore down because wire will get brittle or rusty or decay depending on what it's made of if you just leave it in, in the open. Um, but yeah, it got started in middle school and have done it ever since because it was fun and satisfying and attention getting. And by middle school, it's about 12 to 15 years you've been doing this. Yeah, because I am now, well, going to be 28 really soon. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. And uh, Josh spoke of them in the garden. And that is because Josh is my <laughs> son. And, <laughs> well, I have known of his love for wire creatures for a long time, for yes. all those middle school years. He has encouraged it, fortunately. <laughs> yes. um, okay. So, yes, you have mentioned you do the little things now. You have done the big things before, but right now you're mostly just focusing on small. Yeah. Right? One of my favorite projects that I'd done uh, in high school was a life-size velociraptor. Uh, this was about six feet long and three feet tall. Um, it was covered in feathers, which were all wire because I wanted to make thousands of veined wire feathers. I really didn't have a lot going on socially back then. Uh, so it gave me hours to do it at home. And it was so cool looking. Like I still look back and enjoy that one. Uh, and it also was so heavy and not uh, not made with the engineering knowledge that I have now about how to set up a durable frame. Uh, and so it received a lot of praise at this art show and it hung out in the basement and it eventually got too heavy for itself and started to fall apart and we had to get rid of it. Um, and a couple of years ago, I decided, well, I know more now and I would love to make something like this again and maybe end up getting it in a, a science museum or donate it to some cool person or who was going to pay me for it, not donate. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I started building it and it was similar in length. I mean, six feet long. I was trying to get it really accurate to the fossils and I was going to put a wire mesh over it to give it like a skin and then work all the features onto that skin. And it was looking so cool. And then I was going to move apartments and it didn't survive that process. That's for sure. Um, moving mm -hmm. trucks are traumatic to half finished human sized wire sculptures. Uh, so I decided I'm not going to do anything big until I have a house. 
when I finally can have space where it can go and be made and you know, when I get the rest of the things that I'm doing in life sorted out to the point where I would have time to finish something like that, um, I would like to do more big stuff. But right now, small is the most satisfying and the most practical because uh, I can actually finish it. I mean, this takes four hours and that's like off and on for a couple days. And there's a lot of variation that you can do with small as well. Um, one of the things that is really, uh, I think something that I want to try out more is adding on plates of metal <laughs> to the wire. And this one has wings that have this, uh, it's actually a dress material, it's like tool um, that form that membrane and that form some skin underneath the metal plates. Uh, but this is something that works great on a small scale. You can armor it all up like that. But if this was going to be big, I would need to know welding and I would need to have all this thick metal going over it and it would get way more expensive really fast. Uh, but I can still make something that I think gets the look across and is, is pretty fun um, while being portable and easy. Um, easy being a relative term, of course. What were you How do you attach the um, metal to the wire? Yeah, a lot of that is hot glue. Um, oh. Hot glue is, it's just so versatile. I use it for everything. Um, hot glue worked pretty well here, super glue for some spots. And then some of it also is just wrapped uh, where some of these, like the plates on the tail have a little extension going back where the wire is wrapped around it. So it fits on there too. Nice. Um, yeah. This guy was in a storage box for a while and I had to bring him out for this video. Yeah, I I don't know. I've probably seen him, but I forgot about that guy. <laughs> I think I did him when I'm after I moved out. So oh, probably okay. just saw photos. I like how you added fabric and stuff too. Yeah. Um, let me actually grab uh, one more thing. I was just thinking about how I said that you can do colors with beads and how it's really tedious. And it doesn't have to be completely tedious. You can do colors with beads and not um, not ruin your life. This little crab is an example of that, how he's got some color variation. He only has three colors of beads, uh, some yellow on the belly and on the edges of the carapace, some purple in the middle, and then red all around. Uh, but I think this one does show pretty well how you plan out the length of beads that you're going to need and then string them on so that they'll go in line with uh, the, red, the red and the purple on the previous string. And so you can build this up kind of like pixel art on the computer. Um, yeah. But this this crab was was sweet. He lives in the bathroom on the corner like corner of the sink. And I just remembered that he existed and needed to bring him in sh to show off. And cool. still, the claws can go down. He doesn't have to be so angry all the time. But I like when he's threatening me. So. <laughs> So that's when he's angry. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, that's the basics of wire sculpture. All uh, right. I do a tutorial. We talked about that a little bit. Like, could I make something on the screen? And it really just wouldn't be as fun unless y'all were participating and it would take a really long time and be kind of boring. Uh, but I encourage you, it's really fun when you're actually doing it, especially if you have a small group of people who think it might be fun to try out. Uh, I have brought a whole bunch of wire to an after-school program that I worked at, to a summer camp, and some of the kids got really into it. Some of them showed a lot of progress very quickly, uh, but it's a great kid Occupy activity if you have a lot of kids who need something creative and different um, to hold their attention for a while. Nice. Yeah, that's a good idea. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, thank you for sharing your wire art with us, Josh. Thank you for giving me a platform, too. I really mm -hmm. appreciate you having me on again. Yeah. And again, I'll have a link to the video where Josh is drawing a live praying mantis. And you can check him out at Bookkeeper Josh on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And uh, keep up the good work. Well, thanks so much. You guys <laughs> do. Right.